Hi. Um, this is just a record um, about some of the things I've been observing in recent election politics. And I want to make this record just because I know that I think things and then they they get forget forgotten. I'm not a writer, um, so I'm not good at, at you know, putting things. I'm going to try to be brief. It's really interesting. It, what's happening in the, in the world of electoral politics is really interesting. Um, I should say that you have an advantage when you're bilingual and you are bicultural, by, by, you grew up socially in two countries. That means you understand the heart of one culture and you understand the heart of another culture. Um, as opposed to only growing up in one language and one culture, which means you're uh, monostreamed. You're in the stream of one um, social evolution and all the facts, all the prejudices, all the cliches, all the messages of society, everything is about, uh, is, is monothematic. Where when you're bisocial, meaning that you grew up in two countries, and the few of us who are trisocial, which means that they're equally, um, equally feeling, their heart is equally understanding of three societies, which are very few people. I, for example, speak a third language, but uh, to me, Italy is like, you know, the, my acquired language, a culture that I can't really claim, I know what they're feeling in their heart. I can do that with uh, the Argentinian culture and the American culture. I can, I know what's behind motivation and how people are gonna react and what's gonna make people react. Um, I can't do that with the Italians, I kinda, very superficially. But I think perhaps there are a few people in the world who can be this way about three. I can only be about two. But in any case, when you are uh, binational, whatever the name for it is, bilingual person, uh, but more than bilingual, it has to be, you have to have lived many years in both countries, in each country, uh, to be able to have a, a deep sense of what's going on. It gives you the ability to draw a profile um, with, of course, the, the price of sometimes sounding a little betraying to one or the other. And when either one kind of senses your other side, they feel you're not entirely one of them, um, it's sort of a price you have to pay. But it gives you an academic advantage. And I feel sorry I never studied diplomacy or politics in university because I could, if I had known then when I was young, the advantage I would have in my perception of the world, um, I would have definitely gone into international politics or something. In any case, what I have become interested in very auto, uh, self-taught, autodidactically, um, is things about human nature, which we all can be wise and knowledgeable about if we pay attention to how people behave and the things that we don't say that really um, are behind our motivation that has to do with human nature, our fears, our, our, uh, our eager uh, reactions or um, our, our, our joyful bouts or our um, misgivings or suspicious mistrusts and other things. Uh, you don't need to go to university to understand people, in other words, um, has allowed, has funneled my, um, my understanding of, of the events. And uh, I got to get something out of this, off the stove. Just a okay, I forgot where I left off. But basically what I want to say is that um, because I, I haven't, studied academically politics or sociology or anything, I have had the advantage of applying what I understand about people 
to events that are unfolding in the world. Um, and I've come to discover that civil politics, I mean, civil society and political society and um, the dynamics between the, the dynamics and events that we read about in the paper, we see going on between nations, really find their root and their source in the way we are as people. A lot of things can be understood about uh, in um, when you're trying to understand, for example, a social issue, a civil issue, how to resolve an uh, issue about homosexuality or abortion or, or, or whatever, what have you, rights, you know, uh, to do with um, uh, some social issue that we want to bring to, um, on, we want to bring on the table to argue what is best, what we should do, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, really have their roots in how we are as people in our nature and things that we never actually talk about and, uh, and um, that motiv end up motivating us and uh, giving shape to even our um, our government's de decisions you know like even the, the quote-unquote uh, avarice of capitalism let's make an example of that um, it has to do with human nature it has to do with our, our need to feel secure in this world and we are actually talking about the psychology of the species what, how we evolved uh, to feel about uh, life and what life throws our way and how we handle um, situations outside of the world that we've designed outside of, of how the world is today for example there are ways that are uh, that have to do with how we evolved and, and what we tend to do, what our tendencies are. Um, you know. And so, now understanding human nature, taking it to that level, um, you can talk about the same issues that we normally read about that are arguments, sort of uh, um, academic arguments or intellectual or uh, intelligent arguments that we read about in the paper think about them instead rather uh, as what would be expected of human nature between maybe let's say two people or a group of a family against another family and what dynamics worries that there may be subconscious worries that are natural to all people would be found in that in that family in those people or in those individuals before uh, the same problem at their scale and you can actually start understanding a lot of things and, and what I'm uh, getting what this is about is uh, something that I've been noticing a lot happening in Western in Western uh, po voting uh, uh, politics um, seems that we are hearing uh, in many countries that either speak English or speak Spanish the same um, descriptions about what has become a polarized, uh, two polarized tendencies in politics. The, the so-called capitalistic right-wing, Republican, um, conservative and the progressive left wing um, socialist you know these are the two general areas that we're finding are more uh, with greater definition finding themselves more defined in different countries we just had an election in Britain um, I don't think people were so surprised that that the uh, Labour Party didn't win, but at the same time, you kind of thought they're supposed to win. What is that about? Um, we hear, for example, uh, politicians. We typically the argument of the of the right of the conservatives is uh, make industry stronger, 
uh, make the, you know, affirm the financial sector. It's all about the mechanism of the, of the, of the country's financial machinery. It's all about making the country stronger, bigger, richer through its uh, institutions in, in, the, in the context of, uh, of money. And they're always talking about uh, the elements of the economy, the interest, uh, you know, um, in, um, and anyways, whereas if you look at the other side, and I'm not just in, in the States, but also in Britain, and I just saw uh, the same thing happen in Argentina, you have the human argument of the, of the left, of the progressives, of the, of uh, Bernie Sanders makes points about uh, how the country is functioning that anybody that were to compare what the Republicans are saying and what the socialists are saying, it's hands down a more human, a kinder, uh, more of what we would all want for everybody in the country coming from, from the left, from the progressives. And yet we see that when push comes to shove, when it's time to bring down the cards, the Tories won. In Argentina, Labour won, but only because the the right wing, they call it the radicals um, part, the radical party, which is like the conservative um, sort of conservative center. But in any case, it was the all about liberal uh, economics and so forth. Did such a bad job that um, the country wanted to go back to Labour. But if Macri in Argentina had been successful, even half as successful as um, as he promised he was going to be, probably more than likely he would have won. But because he was such a disaster, uh, the result, nothing worked out that of all the things that he planned during those four years, people went right back to Peronism. We see in Bolivia, um, Evo Morales does all this stuff that green humanists, you know, he gave representation to the indigenous people. He made the country respectable again. All of a sudden people are talking about Bolivia and how they're all surprised at how this, this pitiful country that nobody cared, was regarded as the poorest country in, in, in the Americas all of a sudden was, you know, on the news and people were talking about investing and he did a bunch of good things, but somehow the, the, the let's skip around what actually happened. It seems that we want to easily forget the unrighteousness of what just happened, which was a blatant military coup. And this is not to get into the sort of the neo-colonialist policies of America wanting to control Latin America and and you know secretly helping them uh and all the unorthodox all the crooked things they did they did just really politically crooked things they they chased uh, the uh, the people the, the his party out of the country practically and our um, and the american organization of american states are are um lying <laughs> they're lying they're just saying they're saying st obviously without getting into the details, you can tell that behind there is a hand that is forging um, this change to happen. You can't see it, but you can hear it. You can, you can see all the little myriad of, of half-truths and all indicating that this is being constructed, pushed, pulled from somewhere. And we seem to be okay with it because we first uh you know the people that denounced this military uh, um, coup, military coup uh created by the opposition and, and the support at least verbally that we know of that we hear of of the u.s government um seems to uh been accepted suddenly and again we see the right wing, pro-industry, pro-neoliberalism, uh, 
the ones that want to you know, handle corporation and, and friends with FMI and the British and the American uh, financial state. Um, all of the, all of that seems to be in, in the popular in the in the popular subconscious unspokenly more accepted, and we have a harder time. Uh, we have an impossible time being as passionate for the progressive left as what the things they want uh, would would um, provoke in people. So, in other words, if you remove the world situation and you only look at the arguments, what the, the socialists, the progressives want, they want everybody to be well. They don't they want they don't want there to be really rich people and really poor people. Who can argue against that? Nobody. And if you add all of their arguments, more better education, free medical, uh, people, the vast majority of people don't understand enough about the economy to say, oh, uh, if we have uh, free medical for everybody, that's never going to work economically. Nobody knows that much about how a country is run to be motivated against. Uh, free me uh, free medical for everybody. Um, there are a few people that make arguments in government and then they try to, but really it's not something that the vast population knows about. What the vast population hears is are great things for everybody. <laughs> and they hear the right side, the, um, the Tories and the, the neoliberals and the conservatives and they say things that really never sound like they're going to benefit the majority of the country. They sound uh, like they're, they're, they're interested in their systems working stronger. And so this has fascinated me. This has captured my, my attention because when I notice common denominators uh, being repeated in different cultures, in different countries, uh, the same thing is happening in Lebanon. They're all um, protesting the same thing. The people are saying in France, uh, look at this, two months of, or three months or four months of weekly protests. And yet somehow, uh, whether it be Piñera in Chile or Macron in France, they hold on. And if they hold on to power, it definitely is because there's a whole a surrounding of people and institutions that help them uh, get over the protests and stay in power. Um, so what is, what is it? Uh, how, what is it about the world right now that all these winning arguments are not are not making any headway? They're not establishing any footing. They're not able to grow and push. And at the, by the same token, we have these people that sound selfish, that sound like they want to uh, further wars and create more because all of them have these traits in common. Like they all want to have a stronger police force to control riots and, and make sure that, and they all are going after, um, generally speaking, they, you know, Trump has been more obvious in this regard, trying to shut up the press, the press and make sure that people don't protest and don't say anything against Israel. Against Israel. So they all have this, this want to uh, subdue, keep down protest and controversy. And yet, it is not enough for people to uh, cry out loud and say, absolutely not. Uh, we want everybody to share in the wealth of the world. That should be like an enormous, enormous, strong ball of force that would be unstoppable. And yet, we have the opposite situation. We have what is uh, stronger are the ones that are already inserted in the in the in, in, in institution and in system and financial mechanisms and control with police and and militaries and wars and, and you know and so I'm looking at it as like I was saying before I'm looking at it as. Um, 
an expression of human nature because ultimately everything we do everything that uh ends up getting decided is by the ultimate preference of uh, a human will that comes from uh something much more emotional much more uh we don't talk about it uh and we're often s s uh, s uh, pushed to have doubts against the uh the current system uh, and sometimes we can't win with it, but ultimately everything we decide has to do with some kind of reasoning that comes from the subconscious, from the emotional, from the more esoteric part of our, our, our feelings in, 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 in before our survival, before our existential condition, uh, from psychology and from, from this area. And uh, knowing this, um i i am uh provoked i am um provoked to think of, about this situation between uh left and right as something that has to do with our nature not with conservatives or tories or trump or uh or camacho and and these guys that that, that robbed everything morales did um being smarter or more effective while the 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 progressives and the and the socialists um are somehow slower or dumber or ineffective which is the message that we're uh given by the media that they're ineffective that they always get it wrong and so we need somebody that knows what they're doing and can drive forcefully forward right um, must have to do with something that has to do uh, that is about human nature and there is something in human nature uh, that could explain why out of only being given two choices we will feel more secure with something that sounds like they know what they want to bite like they know how to how to turn to have the steering wheel like they have all their systems and all the ropes and all the all the levers in their hand and they're aggressive and they and they go after punishing or forging or cutting or building walls <laughs> like they have a plan right and um versus not being so enthusiastic about those that talk about beautiful great things that uh, would would are, are proposing bringing a better quality of life to more people uh there is something in human nature and it's basically that we are uh we evolved with a, a strong element of um, insecurity and fear in our nature we evolved always in danger uh of living on this planet for all those things that attack our physicality whether they they have been tigers uh, and lions that would eat our children uh before we had a civilization which is the majority of our um, evolutionary course or whether it be that we've only known our own nature to attack each other and there's always danger and there's the capacity of another human being to to slit your throat and uh and lie to you and so we uh, evolved with this um this fear and and you know that's a subject in itself of course we also have great capacity to love and and think uh, altruistically of the collective uh, all of these things are true but before the the single thought of our existential condition in the world what we want is to be sure we're going to survive that's why it's so hard for people to for example give up money and let's say if let's say i was all my life i've earned you know two thousand dollars a month and all of a sudden i get a job where i'm earning ten thousand a month and in a few months i also have all this money i can take friends out to for dinner and somebody comes up to me and says you know they're going to take my car away if i don't give them a thousand dollars this month uh, and i can't do it i might be able to next month but for sure i'm going to lose my car a friend says this to you if, if i don't have a thousand dollars he comments this 
And nobody at that table is able to say, here, have a thousand dollars. Even though we have 10 times more than we had before, we're unable to let go of something that would make little difference to the overall progression that we have made in, in our becoming richer. Why is the human being this way? It comes from insecurity. It comes from, you know, uh, wanting to escape suffering and fear and security, wanting to escape insecurity. Um, and by the same token, uh, if we have a real placid, if we had a real placid uh, civilization, uh, a placid group of societies where we didn't talk about problems every day and people, we didn't have all these poverty and hunger and inequality and disease and all these problems and corruption, perhaps we might be in a peaceful level uh, place where we would contemplate the proposal of a social socialistic proposal which uh, desires a more equally distributed society and more easily considerate. But because we continue to stay in an I, I can almost reach, I can almost leave suffering, I can, uh, in this con continual state, which our own society doesn't make any better because all we hear in the news is how, how so many people got shot uh, again this week. Um, we want that person with a, with a, with a, with a mean edge, with a, the calculating, with a mechanism, with the, with a hand on the trigger, with the one that cares about the mechanisms, the machinery of civilization, the money, um, the, the, the financial world network. You know, we want to trust those that are richer, not because they're kinder, but because we feel that we'll be safer. And the right, the, the conservatives propose, have the, you know, put this, this air of, of being richer, right? The Tories, they, you look at labor and they're more about, in, in Britain, you look at labor and they're more about like real people. They look the same almost, but even there, even in Britain, uh, but you also see it in, 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 the, in, in, in Argentina and you see it also in the States. These two camps have come to symbolize two parts of our psyche. The part that's like, I, uh, more faithful, more trust in human nature, although, you know, you find more disheveled cases. And the other ones that are the conservatives, the Tories, uh, the, you know, the ones that are uh, diehard Trump uh, supporters, they're all about looking good. And, and then when you look at the, at the media, the pro, uh, commercials and the, you know, and the selections that are made for propaganda and what have you, you always see that the right conservatives, uh, capitalists, they really care about putting that young, smart looking person that has it all together. Uh, well, the other side, when they put their people to speak to the public, they want to, they, they don't even try so hard, but you end up seeing the one that conveys more humanity, more, uh, I'm a real person. So you have like these two sides that are obviously speaking about the single human nature, two sides within the two aspects of, uh, of human nature. Now you could look, you could analyze this. Um, so, well, what I'm getting at actually, before I go there, you know, before I go to where, where I wanted to, uh, where I wanted to take it is, uh, that it is important that we see how unfair and how, uh, how unfair, how unjust, uh, the the environment, the, the choosing, the political choosing environment of voting is right now because we're proposing to people choosing between one efficiency and another efficiency. In reality, that's not what people are uh, voting for. They're not, that's not what they're reacting to. They're, they're going to vote for, it's like, why did Trump and Macri get elected? In our, our, Macri in Argentina. These are wealthy, Millionaires, Macri is an industrialist, his father was an industrialist, and people subconsciously felt, well, you know, if Trump wins, 
that means the country will be richer. We'll, and if we are richer, we'll have more choices. We'll be able to uh, do more things. We'll be stronger. And whatever problems we have will get better. That's the subconscious message of, of the capitalist, uh, conservative Tories and, and uh, Macri and all these people. Um, well, not of them, but I mean, that's the message that the people get. And even though the, the left side is speaking of the problems we have, the real problems, the, the poverty, the suffering, the, the, the lack of uh, making civilization reach the vast majority of people and the 1% and the 8% and all this stuff, we still don't seem to find it important enough. And it's not about efficiency. It's because they have a good heart. We are thinking subconsciously. Instead of thinking I'm going to vote for the one that has money because that's going to make it all possible, I'm thinking, yeah, they sound like they have a good heart subconsciously, the voter is thinking. But having a good heart and caring about what's right is not enough to save me from this situation. What I need right now is somebody that can swim hard and shove somebody out of the way if he needs to pull me out of the water. That's what we're thinking. It is not enough that somebody teaches me how to swim and make sure that I never fall in a lake again or what have you. Although that is the more important thing, it is not motivating motivating us at the moment. And this situation is happening, you know, everywhere. I see it. Ha I just I saw it. Ha it's happening in Chile, in Bolivia, in Argentina, in the states. Look at what Sanders says. Look at what he here. Listen to what he says, and then listen to Trump. How can there? How can we still have any questions about which which way to go? The reason is that there's a a, um, a subconscious mechanism happening that is now being led by a, a polarization that has happened in the world. A polarization of of one idea being personified by one a group of parties and another idea of existential existent uh, another existential idea being represented by the other side which is great but it, it doesn't it's not making people feel like um, they're gonna be saved the thing is saved they we never get saved because precisely what has the world living in equal inequality and uh, awful distribution and so many poor people and so so much hunger and all of the problems related to inequality has to do with mankind's um, uh, mankind grabbing onto system, making everything work through the financial uh, mechanism of, of nations and, and uh, thinking that the machinery, uh, it's like thinking that a family will be happier if they're rich, if they have a big house, if, uh, all, their, if all their kids are in school. Um, not, that will not guarantee that the family is happy, that all the members love and respect each other and will be there for each other for the entire life of that family, even if everybody gets sent to university. Just that mentality will not guarantee, and, and that is happening to humanity, basically. Uh, humanity continues to want to rely on the plumbing, on the, on the math, on the mechanism, and it's not uh, leading governments through an articulation and a, a mechanism that is uh, functioning uh, with human values, pieces or elements of human values and principles that construct the functioning of government. Um, that is not what, you know, people are not saying, well, we're not going to do this because that will lead to, maybe they say it one or two sentences and then immediately they go, well, how are we going to finance it? How are we going to make it work? That is not how the institution operates. That is not how this, this is, that's not what this system does. We never are able to keep the functioning apparatus of government entirely on human values, cause and reaction principles that have to, that will lead to other concepts of ex, other existential concepts. And it should be because government is for living. Government should be for humanity to live not for the system to work. And right now, governments are working for uh, systems to work, for the banks to continue uh, wielding the money and uh, companies continue to stay, continue staying strong. 
Um, and as a consequence, um, you know, we, we try to give to all people as much as we can. And so that, that is the other way around. And it is not a problem of evil people that are, uh, well, there are evil people. Yeah, we find them apparently more in, in where we, uh, but that is not how we're going to solve the situation. The situation is by understanding that it is a result and a consequence of, the, of, the, of our very human nature itself that tends to prefer of, with, because of the misbelief that the system, the rope, the system, the apparatus, the financial, the bank, the, the mechanism will somehow serve me to make things better, to get me out of the mud. And um, ironically, when it comes to nations, that system, that rope, that, that mechanism is exactly what is inhuman. It doesn't think for humanity, it's inert. It, they, are, they are systems, they are mechanisms. And by mankind putting a system ahead of it, it's like putting, instead of horses, the financial systems, administration, mechanisms, banks, and what have you, uh, ahead to lead the carriage of humanity. They're not going to think. We have to tell them what to do. And when mankind has the system, all of that power in his hand, you see the lesser side of his nature. All of a sudden he has the easy ability to go unchecked and quickly diverting more to his human preferences, the, his lifestyle, his social class, the, the situations and the environment that he has grown up to and always known as... Uh, you know, beneficial and abundant for them. You know, they're not thinking all the time and who hasn't received it yet and who has been left out, which is what a, a, a community that wants to distribute things equally and, equally and stay together would do. Uh, so human nature with mechanisms in its hands will find it very difficult to, um, to use those inert and human systems, whether it's the law, whether it's the banking system, to be fair to the whole panorama of social conditions and realities going on. Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the emergence of Marxism and, and socialism is sort of an, uh, are the first sort of political evolutionary intents to try to think, uh, to try to uh, escape human nature, try to escape uh, human nature's, um, uh, how do you say, it? Um, succumbing to um, entrapment by mechanisms that, uh, that's, that uh, have it use the lesser side of its, its nature and, and, and be less towards others. Uh, it recognizes that the uh, human being can only can only love so many so much in when it has a lot of power of system in its hands and it tends to create oligarchy and unbalance and so we need a system that is uh, more uh, vigilant of of human nature's inadequacies and regardless distributes everything for everybody, which is the real spirit be behind Marxism and socialism. And that's why I see it as a, an, ev a, an evolutionary step, sort of uh, the, next, the next evolutionary step of, 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 the, of political uh, progression, political evolutionary progression. Unfortunately, it, it found itself in human history in a, in a place where instead of being seen as um, intellectual exploration upon human nature and its relationship with politics and power as an enemy. So instead of even, never got the chance to be questioned, developed and worked to, to uh, ways that would seem uh, that everybody would want to see work for the world. Instead it became a bad guy, an enemy, and we've been at this confrontation and which has uh, never ceased basically since since when the United States said that you know the Russian Revolution was against them against capitalism uh, 
uh, it, we have never, and now it's become like little, little uh, copies of this uh, polarized situation of people that want to better situations for political through their political thinking, better the situation for the whole population, and people that still believe in the system, except that we don't see it, we don't see it as an expression of the of uh, of the human mind that has. Uh, popped out into, uh, manifested into two uh, political areas. Before we had more political parties, uh, and so, and politics was more about the philosophy that, that, that governed mechanisms of government. But now it has been um, distilled, synthesized to uh, not even a political philosophy anymore. You know, they, words like democracy and, and freedom and all these things that used to before be, uh, were embodied by certain political systems and another one would say, for us, it's justice. Now we see that they're not even applicable, that the ones that say we are about democracy are super undemocratic uh, and they are oppressive. And the ones that say we are about justice and the people, it turns out that they need the banks and the systems to continue functioning. So we see that um, uh, the values are not even what matter anymore, but still we continue to view these two areas as the sort of the, 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 the ones that have a working system and the ones that are talking about concepts and values, which is the same thing. Uh, we're not um, we have we have equalized these two camps, these two political camps that are, have been happening more and more in, in the West, uh, and they are not about two equal parts of our brain of, of human nature. They are about different aspects of life. Uh, one, the the if you look at a family. Uh, the desire of, of the older brothers, of the mother, of the father, for all the kids to have toys and everybody to eat together good food is not symmetrically comparable to making sure that next year we can buy a car um, or, or changing the roof tiles in the house. They're completely different things. They have nothing to do with the other. And yet in politics, we have made two camps and we put them side by side. So naturally, what sounds like something that needs to be taken care of first is putting the roof tiles on the house and buying that first car. And so they keep winning, but because of what they suggest subconsciously to the population, not because it makes sense, because in reality, they don't make sense. Who are making sense are the, are the, are the socialists, are the, are the progressives, are the ones that are saying we, everybody should have uh, free medical and everybody should be pretty much relatively close and, and to each other in wealth. There shouldn't be disparities in society as far as wealth and education or anything. You know, there wouldn't be an argument. We should only go with that um, uh, because apparently the mechanisms uh, are about something else. We'll get the mechanisms to work for that. <laughs> Uh, if, if, if we needed to find a solution, but that's not what we're doing. We're, we have created two different areas, so it's getting worse if we don't diffuse that uh, misperception of symmetry and realize that we're talking about two different sectors of civilization, of humanity, of existence, that have taken possession of, uh, have, uh, of, uh, have embodied uh, two political camps. If we don't realize that we have done that, it's going to get worse. <laughs> it's going to keep getting worse. And the people that are saying, "But wait, my grandmother died because we couldn't we couldn't access health care," that are, are going to get angrier and angrier, and it, the unbalance is going to continue tilting to the side. We need to um, diffuse this polarized. Uh, perception of, of, of government and I don't know, rethink the whole thing. Anyway, those are my two cents for today and have a great evening.